So I just got done watching a video of a physician interviewing a med school admissions advisor. And one of the questions that he was asking her was, can pre-med students get into medical school with a low MCAT or a low GPA? And basically her answer to kind of just sum it all up was no. Um, but there are a few loopholes that we're gonna talk about in this video. So if you are someone with a low MCAT or a low GPA, all is not lost. You still have an opportunity to get into medical school. And I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how to do that in this video. But before we get into some of those tips, I wanna just expand on the answer that this med school admissions advisor gave. So she essentially said, when medical schools look at an applicant, they try and look at them holistically. And that's what we've been hearing for the last five, seven, 10 years. And what does that actually mean looking at an applicant holistically? Because I feel like that's kind of a cop out because obviously medical schools want as many people to apply to their school as possible. It makes them look better. It gets them money. But in all reality, it doesn't help you as an applicant competing with students that do have a high GPA and do have a really good MCAT score. So what does it mean to be holistic or go about looking at applications holistically? And she essentially said, it's like having a three-legged stool. So one of the legs is your MCAT and your GPA score. The other leg is your extracurricular activities. And then the final and third leg is your patient care experience. So she was saying, if you didn't have one of these three legs, then essentially the stool would fall over. You can't sit in it and the whole thing essentially fails. So what does that actually mean for you as an applicant? Well, if you don't have a high MCAT and you don't have a good GPA, then that's one of those legs getting knocked out, causing the stool to fall, and essentially you not getting into medical school. It doesn't matter if the other two legs of your application, so your extracurriculars and your patient care, are solid. If you don't have a good MCAT and a good GPA, then she essentially is saying you can't get into medical school. And I know this isn't a hard and fast rule that every medical school uses. I mean, there are medical schools that have really hard cutoffs. So if you don't have like a 3.0 science GPA, they're not going to look at your application. But there are schools out there that do actually look at your applications holistically. It's impossible to know which schools do that because they all are advertising that they look at your application holistically. So what are the loopholes that you guys can utilize in order to increase your chances of getting into one of these medical schools? So the first thing to keep in mind when applying to medical school is a lot of medical schools are actually going to look at your last 30 to 60 credit hours only. And so if you didn't do as well during your freshman and sophomore year in college, then you can still rely on your junior and senior year to kind of show medical schools that you are ready for medical school, that you can handle a rigorous curriculum, and that you guys got your grades in order the last two years of college. So having that positive upward trend is definitely something to look into. Um, check out your grades, check out your transcripts, Kind of see um, where your grades are at right now. See if you're improving your grades from semester to semester. Ultimately, having that upward trend, that's going to be one of the best loopholes that are going to help you progress through the application process. Now, if you're someone with a high GPA and a low MCAT, I have made videos on those topics, so definitely go check out the channel and look for those videos. But if you do have a high GPA and you just have a low MCAT, then all is not lost for you as well because medical schools know you can handle the curriculum. And having a low MCAT score might just mean you're not a great test taker. And so there's gonna be medical schools out there that would prefer that you have a high GPA and a low MCAT rather than the opposite. Now, if you're someone that has a low GPA and a high MCAT score, I would consider that to be not as good as having the high GPA and low MCAT, only because it doesn't really show medical schools that you were able to handle like a rigorous curriculum during your undergrad and that you just tried to make up for it with your MCAT score, which is totally fine. And a lot of medical schools do look highly on that, especially if your grades, even though it's a lower GPA, as long as you have that upward trend, that can also work in your favor. So the upward trend, the high MCAT score, those are really good things to look at if you do have that lower GPA. But if all possible, really try and get a higher GPA rather than a higher MCAT score 
because in my opinion, I think medical schools prefer that combination. But if you do have a low GPA, we're going to talk about how you guys can overcome that. So going back to that interview that that physician was having with that med school admissions advisor, he asked about master's programs. And the answer that this admissions advisor gave him was doing a master's program is really good, especially if you don't have a really good GPA and you kind of need that GPA boost. But doing just any sort of master's program is not okay. She really emphasized doing what we call a special master's program or really a master's program that has upper level science classes that mimic what you're gonna experience as a first year medical student. And so if you're someone with a low GPA, this is gonna be a game changer for you because it's gonna help medical schools see that you can perform well in the classroom and by doing one of these special master's programs, you're really going to increase your odds of getting an acceptance into a medical school. That being said, you really need to focus on doing extremely well in these programs because they do have hard cutoffs. So if you do not meet their GPA requirement, you most likely will not get an interview at that medical school. And so I'm not really going to dive deep into SMP programs because I have a ton of videos going over SMP programs. But if you guys have any additional questions, drop them down in the comments and I will get back to you. But for some of you out there that maybe aren't quite sure if med school is right for you and you want to do a different type of master's program, some really good ones are anything really involving healthcare. But like I said, if you really want to go into medical school, you need to make sure your master's programs have a lot of upper division science classes. So biochemistry, anatomy, physiology, histology, embryology, pharmacology, epidemiology. So any of these really um, upper division types of science classes that you will be taking in medical school, as long as your master's program has a good variety of those, you should be in good shape. The only reason I recommend doing an SMP is because the majority of these schools have a direct connection with a medical school, which is ultimately going to help you get an interview at one of these medical schools. So they do have that affiliation. And so that's why you should really look into doing an SMP program over any other type of master's program. Now, real quick, I want to just touch on a post -back program because a lot of you guys kind of confuse post -back and SMP programs and you don't really know when to do one over the other. I also have a video on that and I will link that down in the description. But a post back is primarily for someone that needs a small boost in their GPA. So there's someone that maybe is at like a 3.0 and is trying to get to a 3.1. Um, but honestly, if you have a 3.0, you should probably consider doing an SMP as well. But if you are someone that just needs that tiny boost um, with your GPA, then that's when you would do a post back program. And post back programs, all that means is taking additional science classes at your undergraduate university, um, making sure that they are upper division, um, and just doing well in those classes. That's all a post back means. There are formal types of post backs, which I don't really recommend, and that's totally a case by case basis. So if you guys are interested in learning more about those types of things, and maybe you just need help with your entire situation, I do offer pre-med advising through my Facebook page, so come check me out. My Facebook page is called Med School Mentor. You can book a call with me, we can just text, we can chat online. Whatever you feel most comfortable with and would find most helpful, we can do that. But I hope this video was insightful. I didn't want to make this to discourage anyone because if you guys didn't know, I had a low GPA, I had a really crappy MCAT score, and I was still able to get into medical school using these um, tips and tricks so you guys can do it as well. I just don't want any of you guys going into the application process thinking that your low GPA is going to be looked over because you have really great extracurriculars or really good patient care because I was in that situation and if your GPA is really low, if your MCAT is really low, you're not going to get an interview. And I know there are exceptions out there but that is very rare and just don't count on being lucky alone. You know, put in the hard work, do some research, come talk to me, figure out the best way to increase your chances of getting into medical school because you don't want to be forking over a ton of money on all of these applications only to not even get a secondary application or an interview invite. So I'm trying to help you guys save time, save money, and really optimize your chances of getting into a medical school. So. I hope this video was helpful, guys. If it was, give it a like. 
subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you guys in my next video.